Hello and good evening. Welcome to your introductory video for U.S. History 2. Uh, sorry we could not meet there in Douglasville today. We had a little bit of a situation come up last minute and now we're going to be online for the next two weeks. Uh, what I want to do in this video is just kind of give you a quick rundown of what you've gotten yourself into, what to expect, uh, what sort of work you have to do, and uh, just go over the syllabus real quick as well. I'll try to keep it short, about 20 minutes or so. So this is our U.S. History uh, Blackboard page here. Uh, you can see homepage, announcements, syllabus, calendar, lessons, my grades, messages, and upswing tutoring. And I'm going to click on uh, syllabus, which takes us to this page right here. And a couple of things on here that you need to see. Uh, first of all, course agreement form. You have to complete the course agreement form this week. It's how I know that you're going to take the class. It's how you keep yourself from being no-showed and dropped. And it's also what you need to do to be able to see all the lessons you're going to have. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is click where it says History 2112 Syllabus so we can go over this together. Um, my name is Mr. Kennedy and my email address jason.kennedy at westgatech.edu. Normally we would meet on Thursdays at 1230 uh, in room 161. It's a fairly good size lecture hall so we can spread out as much as possible try to keep everybody safe. My office is on the Carroll campus. I don't have a Douglas office but if you're ever in Carrollton when I'm there you're welcome to stop by. My office number is 306 E. My office phone number is there too but honestly, email is the absolute best way to get me because I am teaching on three different campuses plus having to be home uh, to do uh, some online work as well. Textbook, completely free. Uh, a lot of people like that because you don't have to spend any money. If you click where it says textbook, it brings you to this page right here. Our textbook is called the American Yop. It's by San uh, Stanford University Press. And as far as textbooks go, it's actually kind of readable. It's not too boring. Uh, plus, it's free, which makes it even better. Uh, for U.S. History 2, we're going to be dealing with the right-hand column where it says Volume 2 after 1877. And each one of these is going to be a link to a different chapter. And I personally, I studied a lot of World War I when I was getting my degree. So I'll just show you what World War I's chapter looks like. You can see introduction, prelude to war. Uh, it looks just like an actual textbook, except it's, at, it's readable instead of just being boring. All right, moving on from there, I'm going to scroll down to course attendance. There is attendance for this class. Uh, attendance is technically required. You are graded on attendance. It'll end up being 5% of your final grade. And if you make it to every single class, or if you are credited as being present for every single week, uh, then you will get bonus points for that part of your grade. Now saying that, uh, I do also want to let you know that any, any um, absence for COVID-19 reasons is excused. So if you're having symptoms, if you're waiting for a test result, if you've been exposed, whatever it might be, if it's a COVID-19 absence, it's going to be excused. In fact, part of the reason that we are meeting online for the next two weeks is because we had somebody not follow the rules at another campus and some of the people on the Carroll campus have been quarantined as a result. So please, 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 if you're feeling sick, if you've been exposed, if you think you have COVID-19, stay home. It's for everybody's safety. Moving on from there, plagiarism. Uh, plagiarism, it's a serious offense, especially in history. Uh, you have to do all your own work. If you're going to do research, you have to give credit to the original source. Um, it's just, it's proper. It's kind of like, you can't rob a bank. You have to have your own money. But I'll read directly from here because it's important. It says, plagiarism is a serious offense. The penalty in this course for plagiarism or any other infraction of academic integrity will be a grade of zero on that assignment. Incidences of plagiarism will also be reported to the college for disciplinary action. Most students don't intend to plagiarize, but it's your responsibility to make sure it doesn't happen. All work for this course must be original to this course. Coursework from prior semesters or other courses may not be reused. Just to simplify that for you, do your own work. 
you're the one taking the class, your mom, your brother, your sister, your kid, uh, your friend next door, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, the internet, they're not taking the class. So I can guarantee you any work that you turn in will be better than somebody else's. You may think you're turning in the worst work ever, and I will give you credit if you have done it yourself. I promise you that. For grading, uh, there are two tests. There's a midterm exam, there's a final exam. They're not cumulative. So the first half of the class is the first test. The second half of the class is the second test. There will be four reflection papers you have to do. They're short. They're about a page and a half to two pages long. And they're going to be opinion-based papers. There are some readings you're going to have to do throughout the semester. And the reflection papers will be based on those readings. There's also a museum review. You have to uh, look at a virtual website or a virtual museum's website or you have to look and watch a historical film. Uh, either one of those will work, a, a virtual museum or historical film, but you'll have to write a little short paper on it. Activities, that's your daily work. If you do your quizzes, if you show up for class ready to take notes, if you pay attention, if you do the discussions, that's what the activities portion is. Hopefully that's gonna be easy for us to do. Bad news for you, there is an essay. Everybody taking History 2112, whether it's with me or one of our part-time instructors or whether it's an online class, you all have to answer the same question. And then last but not least, participation. I mentioned just a minute ago that you're graded for attendance. Uh, if you have perfect attendance, I'll give you some extra points there. So all of that put together equals 100% of your grade. Exams, two exams, not cumulative. They're going to be multiple choice. I'm just going to tell you now because of everything that's happening this semester, and we don't even know for sure that we'll be able to finish the entire semester together. Multiple choice is the easiest thing. So your midterm, your final exam will be multiple choice. For those reflection papers, um, I mentioned it's opinion. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to choose one of the readings you're assigned for each of the reflection papers. Uh, it's going to be about a page and a half to two pages long. For your first paragraph, you'll just do a short summary of the article that you've read or the primary source document that you've chosen. And then for the rest of the paper, which should end up being about a page, maybe a page and a half worth of stuff, you have to tell me, how do you feel about the reading? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Did it make you think of something else? What are your thoughts? What are your opinions? What are your ideas? A reflection paper is truly that. It's a personal reflection. There's no need to research anything. There's no need to read, to uh, look up something on the internet. All you have to do is read the document that you've chosen and then reflect on it. Tell me how you feel about that document. The museum exhibit review, it's double the length of a reflection paper. Uh, the first half of it is, how do you feel about the museum? Did you like the museum? Did you dislike the museum? Did you like the movie? Did you hate the movie? The second half of the museum review, you have to think like a historian. You have to critique the museum or critique the movie. And I have in here a couple of questions you can consider. You're not in any way limited to these. It's just a place for you to start. Does the museum explain the virtual exhibits adequately? Does the layout of the museum's website make sense? Is there something the museum does well? Is there something the museum can improve on? Those are things that you should be thinking about when you're looking at the, the website that you can answer. Uh, if you're choosing a movie, you can go on from there. You can say, is the movie realistic or is it pure Hollywood? Does the movie follow real events? Let's say you, you watch Apollo 13. Some of you may have seen that movie before. You want to research a little bit on the real events of Apollo 13, tell me, is the movie following the real events or did Hollywood just go crazy with it? Activities, that is the daily work, that's doing the discussions, that's doing the quizzes, that's taking notes in class, that's just being a good student. Uh, hopefully that will be the easiest thing for you to get a uh, good grade on. The essay, I'm not gonna to waste too much time on it right now because I really wanna go over that in person. But if you're curious what the question is for the essay, 
Uh, you must complete a five to seven page essay that explains why the events of 1960 are considered a turning point in American history. Now you might be freaking out, oh my goodness, a seven page paper, what am I going to do? Well, 1968, a lot of stuff happened in that year and you won't have any trouble finding things. Just to give you an idea of some of the things, not even all, but some of the things that happened in 1968, a U.S. Navy ship called the USS Pueblo was captured by North Korea. The Tet Offensive happens in Vietnam. Martin Luther King Jr. is assassinated. Robert F. Kennedy is assassinated. There's a riot in Chicago, and the Apollo mission lands on the moon. And there's a lot of other things in there I skipped. So 1968, huge, huge year. Five to seven pages on that will be a cupcake, if you will. Participation, show up to class. Unless you have COVID-19, then let me know you can't come to class. And extra credit. Everybody must do one museum review. You may do a second museum review, and the second museum review is extra credit. How much extra credit? Two points on your final grade. So if you have an 88 and you really want an A, don't beg. Just do the extra credit, and you'll get the A. Now the last thing here on the syllabus is the course schedule, and I'm going to do my best to keep this up to date. Hopefully we won't have to change it too much. Today's the 13th of August, and you can see introduction. I'm keeping my promise, although normally I would be doing this in person. Uh, and then um, for this week, the only thing you have to do is post your introduction and complete the course agreement form. And I give you one week to do all your work. So you have until... Wednesday night, 11.59 p.m. to do your introductory student introduction discussion and to complete your course agreement form. Now, it's very important you do your course agreement form because that's how I can mark you present and that's how I know you're going to stay in the class and that's how you keep from being listed as a no-show and or dropped. So please do the course agreement form sometime between well, really, do the course agreement form as quickly as you can because I have to turn in the no-shows by Monday. You can also see in bold the paper assignments when they're due. Your first reflection paper is due on the 2nd of September. You can use anything from Lesson 1 or Lesson 2 for your first reflection paper. I'll show that to you in a minute. Reflection paper two is due on the 30th of September. You can use anything from four, five, six, or seven for that, so on and so on. Uh, you also notice at the end of the semester, uh, the 25th of November, that's when the SLO essay will be due. And then on 12-3, which is the very last day of class, that's when your museum review will be due. All right, going back to the syllabus, you'll notice it says COVID-19 syllabus addendum. I need to show that to you because that's really important as well. Um, when we meet each other in person, hopefully in two weeks, I'll have this printed out for you and I'll have it available for you to sign because you have to agree to it. I'll let you read it on your own, but I'm going to simplify it for you. Number one, if you're sick, stay home. Make sure you know what the symptoms of COVID-19 are. If you have any of those symptoms, stay home. Don't come to class. Number two, make sure you social distance. Stay six feet away from people so that you can stay healthy. Also, wear a mask at all times. Um, we had somebody who didn't follow these rules, and that's why I am home right now. So please, social distance. If you feel sick, stay home. Wear a face mask. Make sure you wash your hands. Don't touch your face. Don't cough on people. Don't sneeze on people. If you have COVID-19, if you're being tested for COVID-19, if you've been exposed to COVID-19, let me know. Email me. Tell me. An absence because of COVID-19 is excused. And you also have to let a special COVID response team know that you may have COVID-19 or if you've been exposed to it. This is a page that's available on our westgatech.edu website. COVID notification steps for fall. And you see here, uh, if you have a confirmed case, if you suspect you've been exposed, or if you are experiencing cyst, uh, symptoms, make sure you email covid at westgatech.edu. 
and because this is a PDF file, it won't let me highlight very well. But you can see it right there. I'm running the mouse over it. COVID at westgatech.edu. Now, your name's not put on a board, and then we don't share it with everybody. Uh, it's not to punish you, nothing like that. The reason we need you to email these people if you suspect you have COVID, if you've been exposed, or if you have a positive case is because we need to know who those people are so we can decide do we need to shut down the class, do we need to shut down the school, do we need to let somebody know that, that there's a case of COVID going around. It's purely for reporting purposes, so there's uh, no harm that will come to you if you email that email address. It's actually for everybody's safety so everybody knows what's going on. So once again, if you have a positive case of COVID, if you have a suspected case of COVID, or if you are experiencing symptoms of COVID, number one, let me know. Number two, email that email address because it is super, super important. All right, um, the last thing on the syllabus page says course lesson plan. Uh, you can see there that is the same thing that's on the syllabus. Okay, going back to uh, the lessons folder here, we'll pretend that I've already done the course agreement form. Uh, here's another link to the textbook, American Yop Open U.S. History Textbook. So there's two different ways you can get to it. The reflection paper drop box, this is where your reflection papers will be turned in. If you click on this right now, you will only see the reflection paper number one box open. I do that so that you cannot accidentally submit it to the wrong folder. But just know that the first reflection paper is due September 2nd, 11.59 p.m. Museum review drop box, same thing. Uh, this is where you'll turn in your museum review. Uh, it can be turned in any time the semester. So as soon as you get done listening to this video, if you want to look at one of these museums, and here you can see the museum list, or if you want to watch one of these films, you can see the film list. You can submit your museum review tonight if you wanted to. You have literally all semester doing your museum review. You just have to turn it in by the last day of class. Now, with that being said, I would suggest you get it done sooner rather than later, because the further you get in the semester, the more work you have to do. Dropbox will eventually be turned in right here. I'm going to talk about that in person once again, so I'm not going to go too, too much over that. And then you have your daily week here, or daily work, I should say. Lesson one will be what we do next week. That's not what we're doing this week. This week, once again, is just the introduction. But lesson one is where your student introduction is. So this student introduction right here, that's what you have to do for this week. Uh, there's no quiz for this week or anything like that. It's just this student introduction. But I at least want to show you what these look like so you know. Um, at the top, that's a third way to get to the textbook. This link goes specifically to chapter 16. There's the terms you need to know for this chapter, chapter number 16. There are also videos. Next week, you'll have to watch this one video. The video is where I get the questions for the quiz. Next week, you will have a couple of readings. In fact, there are two readings for next week. Uh, the Pullman Labor Strike and the uh, William Jennings Bryan Cross of Gold speech. Your discussion questions are based on those readings. So not this week, but next week, you will have a quiz, you'll have a discussion, you'll have one video you need to watch, and you'll have two readings you need to do. Those readings are also the same readings that you use when you do your reflection papers. And then uh, lesson two will look exactly the same, uh, set up exactly the same. It'll have a chapter 17 link. It will have the key terms for chapter 17. You'll have a video to watch. You'll have some readings to do. You'll have a discussion. You'll have a quiz. I try to keep it pretty simple so that each week looks the same. Um, unfortunately, my internet is being a pain today, so um, here we go. Here's chapter two, or lesson two. There's chapter 17, terms to know. Uh, for that week, there are there's one video and then one optional video you can watch, so on and so on. 
so everything looks the same. Uh, if you have any questions, you can email me um, next Thursday. Since we still have to be virtual, I will post a PowerPoint and a lecture for you since we can't meet face-to-face. Uh, -face. Also, if you've made it through all 20 minutes of this video, if you'll do me a favor, send me an email either through Blackboard or my email address saying, hey, I watched the whole thing. Uh, if you watch the whole thing, um, all 20 to 21 minutes of it, depending how quickly I, I wrap up, um, I will give you a 100 on a quiz grade. So that's a great opportunity to start the class right. So just let me know, hey, I watched the whole video, and please um, let me know that and I'll give you an A. All right, until next time, um, have a great weekend. Once again, sorry we couldn't meet in person, but I can't wait to meet all of you. Bye-bye.